the Dallas Mavericks went ahead and missed the NBA playoffs and now they're going to the NBA finals like what an insane story if you would have told me this at the beginning of this year I would have thought you're absolutely insane because Luka and Kyrie was not looking good as a duo last year but they've really started to blossom now Dallas Mavericks well they've really put together a hell of a good team and I'm very proud that they were able to do this I mean I'm not a Maverick fan myself I am a huge fan of Luka though and just man oh man the chance that Luka can go ahead and get his first ring right here is going to be insane to watch I'm going to go ahead and break down what this Dallas Maverick team did to go ahead and you know all of a sudden get the pieces and stuff to put them in this position because this Dallas Maverick team is pretty different than the one they had last year there's some new pieces Luka and Kyrie are just the only thing that went ahead and you know started hooping and started playing really well and started fusing together all of a sudden before I get into this breakdown you know explaining this Dallas Maverick team please drop a like and subscribe it's very much appreciated I would love to hit 5,000 subscribers very very soon I appreciate all you guys who are currently subscribed and go ahead and follow my Twitter Instagram real TikTok, all that crumble takes I love to talk to you guys on those apps I pull shorts all there all the time and let's get straight into the breakdown all right start off we got to talk about what the Dallas Mavericks did last year of course they missed the NBA playoffs in the NBA plan they were the 11th seed in the Western Conference with a record of 38 and 44 this Dallas Maverick team just completely fell apart as soon as they traded for Kyrie in this trade Dallas of course received Kyrie Irving and Markeith Morris and Brooklyn went ahead and received Spencer Dinwiddie Dorf Finney Smith 2027 second round pick 2029 first round pick unprotected and a 2029 second round pick people are calling this one of the worst trades in NBA history they graded a D ESPN I'm pretty certain did but at the time well the critics are right this team was just completely falling apart Kyrie and Luka yes they were playing some good basketball at times but it just wasn't enough the rest of this team which is absolutely dog they weren't doing anything besides Kyrie and Luka I mean it looked like it had potential but they just were not winning games and everyone criticized the Mavericks and thought it was one of the worst trades ever and they really shouldn't have done this because before this they were in playoff contention and they just completely fell off a cliff so going into the offseason a lot of people knew that the Dallas Mavericks had to make some kind of moves if they wanted to go ahead and you know be a competitive team in the Western Conference because a lot of people thought the Western Conference was going to be stacked well I don't think people thought it was going to be this stacked but everyone knew it was going to be pretty good and in order to compete in this they knew they had to make some moves because this Dallas Maverick team not making the playoffs taking towards the end of the season like what is this they knew that they had to make some changes and well they made some moves in the draft starting off you know they drafted Carson Wallace which I was a huge fan of Carson Wallace coming out of college but they went ahead and did a smart move that looking back on it might have been one of the smartest moves of this year's NBA draft they went ahead and traded Carson Wallace and Davis I can't even say his last name y'all know who I'm talking about though they went ahead and traded him for Derek Lively this move looking back on it is was so so smart and I'll explain later in the video why this move was such a brilliant move by the Dallas Mavericks it's truly just an amazing move now that we're looking back at it another reason why this Kyrie Irving trade was looked at so bad is because Kyrie could become a free agent and that's what it went ahead and happened he was a free agent but the Dallas Mavericks did go ahead and bring him back on a three-year 126 million dollar deal that includes a 25 to 26 player option so they were able to go ahead and bring him back if they weren't able to it was going to go down as one of the worst trades in NBA history for sure so they also made some other moves in the offseason they went ahead and signed Dwight Powell to a three-year 12 million dollar contract they signed Grant Williams to a four-year 53 million dollar sign in trade with the Boston Celtics yeah um I'd be damned to give Grant Williams this much money he's not worth it they also went ahead and signed Seth Curry to a two-year eight million dollar deal and you know this is what the roster was pretty much looking like at the beginning of the season you know Luka Kyrie Seth Curry Grant Williams Eric Lively they had a very interesting lineup but I will admit it was pretty much looking better than it was last year and then throughout the season they were playing Luka and Kyrie started really meshing together and playing some great basketball but you know what they weren't done yet the Dallas front office looked at this team and they're like you know what we need some more but the trade deadline they went ahead and made some great moves they went ahead and traded for Daniel Gafford from the Washington Wizards they went ahead and gave up Rachulin Holmes I think I said his name right and a 2024 first round pick I probably said that name terribly wrong they went ahead and got Daniel Gafford which was you know, a sneaky move because Daniel Gafford has been very sneaky for them they also went ahead and made a huge move in trading for PJ Washington they went ahead and gave up a 2024 second a 2028 second Grant Williams and Seth Curry and a 2027 first they knew what they were doing and honestly this trade right here is one of the things that just honestly all around moved this Dallas team so now this Dallas team you know the trade deadline had a core of Luka Kyrie Daniel Gafford PJ Washington so this core was on 
honestly looking pretty nice and what happened was this team just really started heating up those Mavericks, well they have a record of 18 and 9 like I said earlier Luka and Kyrie were kind of iffy before that but now they really started heating up and they really started complimenting each other Luka and Kyrie they're both insane closers which we went ahead and learned this year in the playoffs and they're able to close games on an insane level and when you're in a close clutch game with them yeah you're probably gonna go ahead and lose because these two guys are absolute dogs so then we went ahead got to the playoffs and in the first round they went ahead and played the Los Angeles Clippers Luka went ahead and dominated Kyrie went ahead and dominated they went ahead and beat the Clippers in six but then this series in OKC Luka was banged up we saw a ton of injuries that this man had and Kyrie Irving went ahead and he really stepped up in the series Luka having some bad games Kyrie really started heating up he started having a lot of you know he would start the game off just amazing he would go ahead and drop like 25 points in the first half start cooling off a little bit PJ Washington was absolutely insanely clutch in the series in the fourth quarter in the playoffs this year he's been so 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 good and then of course Derek Lively like I mentioned earlier he hasn't even looked like a rookie he's looked like he's been in the league for multiple years the way he's been balling out he's been playing at such a high level and I'm very sad that he went ahead and got her and I pray that he can go ahead and return in the NBA finals because this man is on a whole nother level like I said he doesn't even look like a rookie but yeah the Dallas Mavericks would go ahead and beat the Thunder in six Luka would pretty much go ahead and close them out and then you know now they're currently as I'm making this video in a series with the Minnesota Timberwolves and they're up 3-0 and this Timberwolves team pretty much did it to themselves game one the Mavericks pretty much went ahead and dominated game two Luka would hit that insane game winner and then of course game three the Mavericks go ahead win again with Luka and Kyrie being super clutch in the fourth quarter so uh, I guarantee you that the Minnesota Timberwolves they're getting eliminated I mean no team has ever came back from 3-0 at NBA playoff history and it's not gonna happen now so even if they close it out now it goes to five goes to six the Dallas Mavericks are on the way to the finals and now the real question is with this team that the Mavericks have went ahead and built can they go ahead and win a championship this year versus the Boston Celtics now it's gonna be tough but I genuinely think this team has a chance like it's it's going to be a very close series it's going to six it's going to seven Luka and Kyrie pretty much have to be on point this series I mean there's going to be a lot of storylines Kyrie returning to the garden in the finals is going to be such an insane thing I'm going to get chills watching it so I can see Kyrie in this year's finals just going absolutely nuclear because you know it's the Boston Celtics he doesn't like them whatsoever because of all the drama that went ahead to happen with all the fans and all that stuff he doesn't like the Boston Celtics so I could see him going nuclear Luka to be honest with you guys I could pretty much see him averaging like Giannis final stats like 35 points and just averaging a triple double because I know Luca you know he didn't get all the way to this point just to go ahead and lose and then like I've said earlier PJ Washington he's been clutching the finals hopefully Derek Lively can go ahead and return because he's a crucial piece and the Mavericks do go ahead and lose the finals a part of the reason is going to be because Derek Lively wasn't on the court but you know I also got to give props to the Celtics Jason Tatum Jalen Brown he just won Eastern Conference Finals MVP Celtics got one hell of a squad man they were the best team in the NBA for a reason this year and they had the best record even though you know their playoff run was very questionable with playing a lot of injured teams and a lot of you know teams that you know really aren't that so I feel like this Dallas Maverick team is for sure going to be their toughest challenge that they're going to have to go ahead and face in this year's playoffs and you know what I don't know I give both of these teams a chance I honestly think it's 50 50 I think the Mavericks got a chance they got Luka Kyrie they're going to hoop and then of course the Boston Celtics have such a great solid core I think Porzingis is also going to be something interesting to watch even if Porzingis does return I feel like it's going to be a little bit before he goes ahead and returns and becomes you know his normal self because we've seen it multiple times in the past where Porzingis returns from injury he's just not the same guy for a little bit but I generally think the Dallas Mavericks have a chance they built such a great team and if they do go ahead and win the NBA finals and Luka wins finals MVP it's gonna be such an insane story to talk about how this Maverick team was the 11 seed and then all of a sudden won the NBA finals like that's one hell of a team I'm not gonna lie Mark Cuban dog and the Dallas Mavericks I gotta applaud you guys and if Luka go ahead and wins a ring he's definitely gonna be in the best in the world conversations but but I guess time will truly only tell if you enjoyed the video guys please drop a like and subscribe let me know who you guys got winning the NBA finals in the comments if you enjoyed the video watch these other videos right here like i said drop a like and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one